Let's rock and roll. Chapter five, Dearborn Essentials of New Jersey Real Estate Key Terms. You know how this goes. Say the term, give you a couple seconds, uh, tell you uh, kind of like a definition or a little explanation about it. And then if I need to elaborate, give you some stories, tell you a little bit about it, um, I will do so. Uh, so again, I'm going to give you a chance to kind of answer in your head. So let's get rocking. Let's get rolling. Accretion. Accretion. So this is an increase of land caused by the gradual depositing of solid material by the action of water. Uh, the solid material that they'll probably uh, refer to in this is going to be alluvian. Not get that confused with a couple other definitions in this chapter. Um, and accretion is basically the opposite of erosion. And the way I think of it, I'm going to actually switch back to the word. Um, it looks kind of, if you jumble up the letters a little bit, it looks like creation. That's how I always remembered it. So accretion is basically the creation of land caused by the gradual deposit of solid material by the action of water. Also, it could be wind, too. So that's why I'm saying this is truly the opposite of erosion. Air rights. Air rights. They belong to the owner of the land below. So when you own real estate, you do own, unless there are, unless they have either been sold already or there are restrictions in regards to this, you own the air rights to the uh, air above your property, um, as long as not legally restricted in any manner, shape, or form. Alluvian. I just said what this was when we were talking about accretion. Alluvian. This is solid material deposited by a body of water through the process of accretion. Okay? So they kind of go hand in hand. Again, opposite of erosion. Avulsion. Avulsion. So this is a sudden change of course of a river or stream. Um, I know it says stream, but Again, it's a river or stream. It's one of those navigable waterways when it suddenly changes course. Okay, and that can happen when you're dealing with um, navigable waterways. They could just all of a sudden change course uh, because of natural occurrences, uh, fault lines. There's a, 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 a litany of things. I am not a scientist. I'm not going to go get into that. But there's a litany of reasons why that could happen. But that is avulsion. Bundle of rights. Bundle of rights. And you own real estate is said that you have a bundle of rights to the real estate. And those bundle of rights include possession, control, enjoyment, exclusion, alienation. I've seen different people use different uh, uh, different uh, acronyms for this to try to help them remember. I just can't come up with a good one. Uh, possession, control, enjoyment, exclusion, alienation. Okay, That's what... I always refer to as the bundle of rights. You will see it in other textbooks as well, written other ways. Um, so keep that in mind too. It's not bad to kind of Google bundle of rights and see the other ways that they uh, that they word this. But it all comes down to the same stuff. You know, the right to possess it, control it, enjoy it, exclude other people from the property, no trespassing signs, and alienate. You can alienate or disposition it um, by selling it, devising it. Um, you know, transferring it to a loved one as well. You have all those options. When you own real estate, this is part of your bundle of rights. This is the total encompassing package. Chattels. Chattels. Chattels is tangible personal property. Uh, things that you can move. Uh, my, uh, my, my clicker is personal property. Uh, the difference between real property and personal property, you, look, Everyone's going to tell you a little something different. The litmus test always has to do with some kind of mobility, okay? When we talk about fixtures, which is fixtures, basically personal property that's turned into real property. Um, when we talk about fixtures, we'll get into the legal test for a fixture. However, uh, chattels are personal property or personality, okay? And those are transferred through a bill sale. So typically real estate sales contract in any manner, shape, or form in any state is not going to uh, include provisions for personality. Um, so a bill of sale will have to be attached 
as a secondary contract or an addendum of some sort to the real estate product, uh, contract if there is actually personal items that are going to be transferring with the property, such as furniture, things like that. Corporeal, corporeal. It's a real simple one, it's tangible. Okay. There are corporeal assets and incorporeal assets. Okay, corporeal assets are things that I can touch, things that I can feel. Um, the deck in my backyard, that's corporeal. That's a corporeal asset, okay? Incorporeal are, are air rights, which we've talked about, and other rights that we will talk about. Those are incorporeal assets, okay? Corporeal, tangible, incorporeal, or intangible assets. Devise, devise. This is to will real property, leave real estate to someone by will, okay? So your dying testate, when you die testate, that means that you have a will. So I'm, I'm kind of throwing out, and again, this is stuff that I'm going to do throughout these. Uh, testate means that you're dying with a will. Intestate means that you don't have a will. Um, so when you die testate, you're leaving real estate, and you own real estate, and you own real estate. This has to do with real estate only, the word devise. So what that is to leave real estate to someone by will. Emblements. Emblements. Emblements are actually uh, chattel. Uh, so I just said that emblements are chattel, but what they are is they're actually annual crops, the rights to harvest annual crops. So if you're selling a farm, uh, they're really popular here in Jersey um, with a lot of farmlands. Um, the rights to harvest the crops are not do not pass with the real estate. So you'd actually have to. So when you're if you're a good uh, real estate agent, you know who works farms, you're going to be doing things uh, such as having your attorneys write up um, a bill of sale for the emblems if the emblems are to pass, or if there's the intentions of them not passing, then you don't have to do anything because. They don't pass with real estate unless they have a separate bill of sale. So annual crops, the rights to harvest them are called emblems, and they are also referred to as chattel. They're personal property, just like my clicker is, okay? My clicker's personal property. The rights to harvest annual crops are personal property. Erosion, erosion. Erosion is the opposite of accretion, right? So if we said that accretion was the gradual deposit of soil uh, by water or wind, okay, to increase land, this is the wearing away of land, usually due to wind or water. Uh, that's why, like I said in the first one, when they said accretion and they didn't have the word wind in there, I was kind of like, eh, eh, they should have that in there because that could happen as well, okay? So this is the opposite of accretion, erosion. I think everyone knows um, in some manner, shape, or form, what erosion is. Um, so this is usually one that people kind of get really easily, but I always want you to tie it back to accretion. I want you to think of it as the opposite of accretion. Fixture, fixture, fixture. So this is once personal property, now real estate. So fixtures, I told you I was going to go over the legal test for a fixture. Um, the, the litmus test for what makes this item that was personal property now real property or real estate or realty, okay, all synonyms of one another. Um, personal property, let's just give you an example. I go down to Home Depot. My wife hates our mailbox. Our mailbox is an awful, awful old rickety mailbox. She says to me, I'm done with it. I need to get a new uh, mailbox. Will you go to Home Depot and get a mailbox for us? Sure. So I go to Home Depot, buy the mailbox, and when it's in my truck, it's personal property. It's not attached to anything. But then once I bring it home, okay, once I bring it home and I cement it down into the ground right outside my home, then it has changed. It has now become not real property, but has become a fixture, which it once was personal property. So what happens is sometimes it's hard to identify if something is or is not a fixture. So let me give you the legal uh, test for a fixture. So the first one is method of attachment. How, how is it attached to property? Okay. Next one is adaptation of the article to the real estate. Okay. Third is the intention of the parties annexing the item to the real estate. And fourth is the relationship of the items to the parties annexing it to the property. Okay. So 
let me take the same mailbox scenario and let me say that uh, I had a great, 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 great aunt who built this um, magnificent mailbox, right? Magnificent mailbox by hand, and I bring it with me to every single one of my properties, and I use that as my mailbox, okay? Is this beautiful ship-like thing with a mermaid on the front. All this, it's beautiful, blah, 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 right? So it has some sentimental value to me. So it, the first couple of tests for a fixture probably would fail, right? Um, so, I mean, it would pass, excuse me. Uh, so um, method, of, uh, adapt, uh, method of annexing it to the property, um, adaptation of the article to the property, and intentions of the part. Actually, that one, the intentions, because it was uh, there's just a relationship of it, uh, and I bring it to all of my properties, I don't think that it's something that I would have intended for it to stay with the property. Um, but something like that, you do have to replace with something else. Uh, I would, for practicality, let's talk practicality versus legality. Practicality, I would um, say that you have to exclude it in any kind of advertisements or any kind of uh, MLS uh, listing. Say, hey, you know, that my great, 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 great aunt built it. But we need to keep that. <laughs> so, um, but again, I think a court system would also agree, hey, it was never my intention to leave it with the property, right? Because of the relationship of it to me, which is that fourth test, you know, relationship of the item to the parties. Um, also, if you, a lot of people pay a lot of money for certain things like uh, light fixtures. Um, in New York, I've seen chandeliers go for $500,000. Um, I've seen some crazy, crazy stuff. And yeah, I don't think any judge would ever say, hey, yeah, that person, the, the person, you know, attaching it to the property, Totally, totally meant to leave a five hundred thousand dollar chandelier. No, doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. So it wouldn't pass there. Also, uh, while I'm on this, I, I do like to give you kind of like the question that everyone always asks with this. Um, and when I say everyone, I say the testing centers usually go with this question. They like to make sure that you understand the transformative nature of personal property versus real property versus real property into personal property. So they give this example: there's a tree on the property. They'll ask, is it real property or personal property? It's real property. Okay, that tree is real property. Okay, it's part of the land. Okay. Now, chop down the tree, turn it into lumber, keep it in my shed. Is it real property or personal property? Now it has mobility and is not annexed to the property in any manner, shape, or form. So it actually transforms into personal property. Now, I take that same lumber and I build a deck off my house with it. Is it real property or personal property? It's it's real property again. Um, so there's kind of a transformative nature in that um, certain situations like that could call for it. And they love asking that multiple choice question or questions similar to it. Hereditament. Hereditament. Please, if I pronounce that wrong, I apologize. <laughs> and this is anything that can be inherited. Not much for me to add there. Uh, hereditament is anything that can be inherited. Improvement, improvement, improvement. That's when we're talking about real estate. Keep in mind, we're talking about real estate in this chapter. Um, this is manufactured attachments to the land. So when we're talking about real estate, okay, so real estate is the land and any improvements on the land, okay? So we're talking when you own real estate, you own land, right? Any Manufactured attachments made to the land, such as a home, a shed, a pool, this, that, and the other. Okay, and you also own the air rights above it and the subsurface or mineral rights below it. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Incorporeal. So we spoke about this before. We talked about corporeal, which were our tangible assets. So incorporeal must be our intangible assets. Land. Land. Uh, we're just talking a little bit about land. Now keep in mind, land is different than real estate, okay? And it's different than real estate. So land is the earth, including the air above. And I would also say the subsurface uh, below, okay, Bef below that. Um, so, again, when we talk about real estate, real estate is the land, this, plus any improvements to it. That makes sense. Littoral rights. Littoral rights. These are uh, a form of water rights. These are land bordering bodies of water that are affected by tides, uh, the ocean, okay? Big bodies of water. So think L, large, your oceans, okay? So this is your oceans right there. Next are our mineral rights, our 
Mineral right. I can't even say it. Mineral rights. Those are also known as subsurface rights. Mineral rights are subsurface rights. Synonym of one another. Parcel. Parcel. Oh, no. I didn't put down parcel. Parcel is actually a specific tract of land. Okay, it's a specific tract of land. Oh, I did put it down. So I must have added a, an extra slide in there. Excuse me on that. For all the mistakes I make, I'm allowed to make one or two more. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. So it's a specific tract of land. Personal property or personality. Personal property? Personality. What is this? So this is everything that's not real property. I don't necessarily like that. Um, I think that it has to be an item. It has to be tangible, right? It has to be corporeal in some manner, shape, or form. So this is a tangible thing. It's personal property, right? My pens. I have quite a pen collection. My pens are personal property, right? And personal property can turn into real estate depending on the situation just as I was saying before and when it turns into real estate it is also known as a fixture okay? so that is personal property turning into real property and that would be referred to as a fixture real estate real estate real estate this is land improvements and bundle of rights well when you own real estate you have the bundle of rights okay when you have some sort of interest in the real estate you have a bundle of rights without ownership or an interest in the property. Okay, when I say interest, I mean you're having an estate or a less than freehold estate, which is your leasehold. Okay, if you have a leasehold in the property, you do have access to the bundle of rights. You have an interest in the property. Okay, right? So real estate is referred to as the land improvements and also incorporates a bundle of rights when you have any type of estate interest in that property, okay, in that parcel of real estate. Real property, realty, real property, realty. Synonyms for real estate, simple stuff right there. Reliction, reliction. This is a creation of land by the gradual withdrawal of water. Well, they sometimes refer to this as a form of accretion as well. So reliction is a form of accretion where what happens is land is created by the gradual withdrawal of uh, water so things like dry up recede okay that's why you see the re reliction i always think of it as receding so that's the gradual withdrawal of water okay riparian rights riparian rights so we talked about what our littoral rights were okay which was our tide waters okay uh, large bodies of water, okay? Riparian rights are uses of water by adjoining landowners uh, for rivers and streams. Uh, honestly, I don't like the wording of that, but um, uh, it, it, rivers or streams have to be in there, okay? Riparian rights, R-I, navigable waterways, they sometimes refer to it as too. So you'll see rivers, streams, or navigable waterways. Subsurface rights, subsurface rights. Those are sometimes referred to as our mineral rights. And that's the ownership of minerals, oils, and so on. <laughs> oh, the way they word some of this. Those are your, you know, basically the opposite of air rights. You know, if we're using opposites in this chapter, opposite of air rights would be our subsurface or our mineral rights, okay? Trade fixture, trade fixture, trade fixture. That's removable by the tenants. So this refers to businesses, commercial properties, okay? You love the uh, nail basin uh, example with salons, okay? So if a salon moves into a property, right? So they rent a property and they put in all this plumbing hardware, blah, 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 to get all these sink basins in there to have their station set up, right? A hair salon. Um, what happens is those walk, talk, act, and pass the witness test for a uh, legal test for a fixture. So, you know, the landlord could could argue, hey, those are fixtures. Those stay with property now. Um, because they have to do with the business and the commercial use of the business, 
the tenant has the right to remove them as long as they bring the property back to the condition that they had found it in. Okay, so a little bit of uh, construction work, but they can remove trade fixtures. That's it. Done. Ova. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with me on another wonderful journey. I will see you again soon.